Welcome to Brand Lover, honest, real, and lively conversations for flourishing entrepreneurs and budding business owners on a mission to cultivate a heartfelt brand that connects with their purpose-driven mission. My hope is that you walk away feeling inspired and refreshed with a weekly takeaway in your back pocket that you can apply to your life or business. A huge heartfelt welcome to Liv Morgan from By Liv Fame. Thank you so much for being here, Liv. I would love for you to introduce yourself and your business to our beautiful audience. Okay. Hi, I'm Liv. I am, like Rach said, the founder and creator at By Liv. Um, I work with my husband um, and we have two children and quite a few fairy children, um, but we don't need to go there. <laughs> so um, we have been, my husband and I have been creating special pieces, mostly for people's ears for the past nine years now. Um, it's been an accidental business. We actually never set out to do this. I was a midwife um, before we started making earrings. And, yeah, we are just so very, very thankful that this is where we are. But if you had told us 10 years ago this is what we'd be doing, we would definitely have thought you were crazy. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, amazing. Such an amazing story. Um, So you shared a little bit about um, being a midwife, which was kind of my next question. Um, How did the change come about? Why earrings? Um, You know, did you plan the career career change or did it just kind of happen? No, it definitely just happened. So um, our daughter was, mm, she must have been only one and I didn't like the mini-me clothes that you could get for kids, like where's the fun, the colour and all that sort of thing. So Mm -hmm. my grandmother taught me to sew so that I could make her fun clothes. Um, So I started making, I know, I know. So I started making kids clothes and I did some markets with that and um, I made some little fabric buttons to go on to the dresses and things that I was making. And I thought at this time I had three pairs of earrings that I rotated through. Like they just weren't my thing. Not at all, you know, (laughs) earring crazy. I wasn't. So anyway, I thought they'd make cute studs. So I sourced some backs and I made some little studs out of fabric and my sister-in-law saw them and she said oh you should take them into the shop down in the street and I'm like don't be ridiculous this shop stocks elk and like all of those big brands and I'm like ha ha she goes I dare you and so I'm (laughs) like okay so I took in I think I only had about 10 pairs or something maybe even only half a dozen took them in and this fabulous lady who owned it at the time, she says, I just have to ring my husband. He was her business partner. Yeah. And so she's on the phone. I'm standing there in the shop with his tiny little tray of fabric earrings. And she said, Dals, I've got this fabulous local designer in store. <laughs> just standing there, like shaking my head going, I'm a midwife. Like, seriously, it was not on my radar at all. So... At that point in time, we had two kids when I first made those little studs. Our son was then one, so our daughter was three. Uh, And, yeah, we just kind of started making those and started playing with some more materials. And then we took the big plunge. We were preparing to travel around Australia at that time and my husband was still an apprentice. So we had no money, two little kids, no money. And I didn't work full-time as a midwife. I was just working casually like I was at home with our babies yeah. and so um, we took the big leap of there was a new local market and the stall fee was a hundred dollars and I was just <gasps> like oh, oh my gosh like and I, I still sit thinking about it now like Jason yeah. I told him, oh that's a bit that's a big risk like you know what if no one buys them blah 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 anyway we took the, I'm sweaty like thinking about yeah. it we took yeah. the big risk yeah I feel at hundred dollars yeah and it was one of the most successful markets we've had still to this day. Oh, like, wow. I remember a friend of mine now who's a candle maker, he, that's the first time I met him, he said, you're going to be so busy, it's going to be fabulous, don't worry about it. And I just remember looking up at him at the end, like after it had finished, and I'm just like, 
oh my gosh <laughs> so, like I told you oh um, but yeah gosh. that's how it came to be and then we traveled around Australia and we did markets all around Australia and I got very uncomfortable and would take my little box into shops and talk to the owners and say I'm Liv this is what I make would you be interested in stocking them so by the time we finished traveling around Australia I had a full-time job for me in making earrings predominantly it was markets at that point and some wholesale stuff as well um, but Jace went back to plastering and then mm -hmm. fast forward a few more years and COVID hit and markets wouldn't close because yeah. I'm in Victoria um, yeah. and I went ooh it's like I wanted to go more online because the kids were at school and it wasn't mm. like when we were traveling and we had all week with them and then work mm. on the weekends so it's just really it was exhausting and yeah it just wasn't where I wanted to be so thankfully I say I know COVID's been horrible for a lot of people but I'm thankful that it pushed me into yeah. the more online I was already present online but it wasn't my focus so that became my focus and then yeah during COVID, my husband had to quit his plastering job because I just couldn't do it solo anymore, not with teaching the kids, you know, homeschooling and all of that as well. So, yeah, now here we are, both making earrings and, yeah. Wow. That is incredible. I knew your story, but I didn't know those few key, um, you know, acceleration periods because that market just must have yeah. felt like such a massive confirmation for you. Oh, it was insane. And, you know, yeah, it's kind of, it did. It said, right, this is something we could do. And that's when I said to Jace, we can do this around cause, around Australia. Because we yeah. didn't know, we didn't know how long we were going to be able to go for, you know. We had a little yeah. $3,000 caravan. Like it was very, and I'm like, oh, we can do this. Yeah. Wow. So it was very amazing. Mm. And I totally can relate to that feeling of that first ever really big investment in your business. Yeah. it's like laying yeah. it all on the line like it doesn't matter how much oh. it is like a hundred dollars if you you know if you're the only income that you're having is as a casual midwife for the yeah. whole family and to take that yes. money and invest it in something that you didn't really know if it was going to work but trusting your intuition yeah. and like that yeah. just gave me tingles because I can, you know, I can relate to that in different ways. And I'm sure many other people can as well. It doesn't matter how much it is. It's always really scary to invest in your business and in yourself, yes. isn't it? That's right. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And every single investment that I've made since then, which have gotten considerably larger, yeah, but yeah, yeah it's yeah. still that same sweaty, scary yeah. feeling. So, yeah, it doesn't ever get easier making those leaps, but no. you have to trust yourself and trust your experience that, yes, yes, this is the right thing. This is the next step. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes they don't pay off, let's be honest. Like, let we make decisions yeah. that I feel scary and like that, but there's always some kind of lesson, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. There's a silver lining to every single thing That's you do. Yeah. Yes, and I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's something that you instill in everything, even your brand, but... We'll get to that in a minute. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something else about your your investment. <laughs> I've forgotten it, bless me. Um, okay, so so just to clarify, so you quit your midwifery job to travel around Australia and you just never went back. Well, did I go back? I don't think I did. No, Amazing. I think I put my I didn't go back, no, because we went travelling and then we came back and... I was too busy. And then when COVID hit and they were calling out for nurses, like you, as a nurse mm. or a midwife, you've got a five-year period where you don't need to work to keep your registration. Yes. And I was coming up towards the end of that and letting my registration go was on the cards. And so I put yeah. my hand up and said, mm. emailed my manager at the time and said, can I just, like, I'm still here letting you know, you know, can I just slip back in? Oh, you'll have to do a resume and everything. I went, I don't have time for that. <laughs> just like so okay that was no. that. Like, that was the decision that. was kind of made for you yeah yeah, yeah incredible yeah. I'm like okay yeah I would yeah, have made it, time obviously if I had said yeah can you come in and work this yeah. weekend or whatever it would have been yeah. like sure of course I can but yeah, yeah. I was like oh no no so yeah because at yeah. some point you have to really just be one or the other don't you like you can't just be 
something that I've been really learning lately is that you can't be just lukewarm about something. Like you can't just have one foot in one camp and one foot in the other camp and dance between the two because nothing's ever going to work for you. No, that's exactly right. Yep. And, you know, when I did give up my registration, so many people said to me, oh, don't be stupid. Why Mm. would you do that? And, Mm. you know, why wouldn't you just keep it ticking over in the background and in case people stop buying earrings? And I went, well, you know what? I prefer doing what I'm doing now. So if they do stop making my earrings, I'll probably do something else. That chapter has come and gone. And, you know, if I loved being a midwife, then I would never have taken on this other journey. Like I would have gone back to it. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I will find something else I love if the time does come at some point where I decide I don't want to do this anymore yeah yeah it's such a typical response though like just the way that society is conditioned to feel that they need that security yeah 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 absolutely 100% and so many people think that entrepreneurs that we're just having a go like you know what I mean they don't take yeah How's your little, how's the earrings going so how's many people? How's your business. little business going? Yeah. yeah, How, yeah. How's the little yeah. graphic design going? Are you still doing your yeah. little graphic design at home? And I'm like, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, I am. And I am yes, sitting I here am. in this coffee shop working <laughs> while you're what? <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm yeah, like, 15 yeah. years later, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, exactly it's funny isn't it it's actually just laughable I used to get a little upset about it but now I just think oh you poor dears like if only you knew yeah that's me too I always go if only you knew (laughs) yeah just just and just think like it's just took that one hundred dollar investment like that's that's what like started the whole compound effect for you was just you taking that one step of belief in yourself that so many people can't like imagine if you hadn't if you'd been like oh we need to pay for groceries that week I can't do it I couldn't possibly do it yeah amazing yeah 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 love it it's huge excited (laughs) okay so you touched earlier on the silver linings and that's such a typical live statement um Mm -hmm. it's just you know embodied in your essence but I just want to touch on the fact that you like you are proof that it's possible to use your brand an earring brand at that to fulfill personal convictions a sense of purpose and also facilitate this lifestyle where you're actually quite free um, obviously, that was mm. the intent. Like that was the whole reason that By Live came about was to facilitate that freedom to travel. Um, but also just, you know, I know that you've got a real heart for self-love, like and a real heart for for mums because of your midwifery background. So I'd just love to know how how that came about. Like did you work towards that or did it just naturally sort of become part of the brand? Um. It's not something I sat down and went, right, what's my purpose? It's just been something like, as you say, like as a midwife, I saw women doing things that they thought were impossible and I saw the look on their face Mm -hmm. once they'd done it and that is just like I'm getting teary thinking about it. It's just so powerful and can change the trajectory of a woman's life when she achieves that thing, you know. I feel that. I totally feel that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so then we went travelling and, you know, I was a busy mum with uh, three, they were three and five, when they turned three and five when we left. And I was lucky enough to at a point in time where a lot of us feel like we're drowning because it's like Mm. Groundhog Day on steroids and it's all-consuming and it's exhausting and it's just at times absolutely heartbreaking. (laughs) I was enough to take off and just take on this whole new experience of life in living in a caravan, but with my husband there 24-7. So that was a big transition for him because he'd been working all the time and, you know, so he found that transition hard, but I found me. So for like five years, you know, you become a mum and you kind of, you don't do it intentionally, of course, but you just automatically go to the bottom of the pecking order because you have one or in some cases a few little people who are just dependent on you for life Mm, like so it just naturally what happens and I was lucky enough 
at that point in time in life to see that that's what had happened and I didn't know who I was anymore. Mm -hmm. And so having that time and that space on our travels allowed me to identify that and to reconnect with myself Mm -hmm. and realise how important that is. And so Mm -hmm. that is, you know, when I first started making earrings, it was I was making earrings. But then as it progressed and I started thinking about it, I saw this is an opportunity for earrings to mean more than just something you wear, which is what I thought they were before I started making earrings. It was just something I put on each day. Like, you know, I didn't understand that they could be something more, something that makes us feel good or something that can convey how we feel to the people around Mm. us, you know, big, bright and bold if you're happy and ready for the day or a little bit sombre if you're not really feeling it or yeah, yeah, then we created our special range of affirmation earrings and that was the heart and soul of why they were made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that, like, we did some brand work a couple of years ago where we sort of just mm. went all in on the essence of buy, live and what it means. And I'm just wondering if that, like, how was that helpful in sort of, progressing the brand and evolving the brand into where it is and and embodying that that sort of meaning because I know that you sort of you sort of had the idea but how did it feel to actually articulate that and be able to express that because I know that the affirmation earrings sort of came a little bit after that and I'd just love to hear the journey from you from a mindset point of view really about how Mm. that sort of helped you feel um, and how the brand is evolving since then yeah so definitely again um choosing to go all in I mean when I started Mm. I just I I can't remember who it was someone that I know just made me a $50 little logo I picked it out 20 that she made I'm like yep I like that and I printed it in black onto sheets of cardboard and I cut them out and I poked holes in them and that was my card and that's what I thought a brand was and so you know I'd then I'd seen something about brand colors or something and so I changed that black to mustard because I really liked mustard and a blue because I don't know why and put them on white cards but again I just thought that's what it was and then I met you and we chatted and I'm like oh (laughs) okay (laughs) but again making that decision and that investment which Mm. at the time felt very stretchy too yes was absolutely huge And it made me take myself seriously. I think it it was that point in time when I went, yeah, you know what? This is actually a brand. It's not little earrings, a little Mm. earring business anymore. This is a brand and I'm doing this for a reason because I want people to feel good. And, you know, I, I just started taking myself and what we did more seriously. So, yeah. And then that gave me the confidence to, you know, a, approach more wholesalers and things like that because I didn't feel like I was a little handmade home business anymore like yeah this is what I do and this is me and it was represented so beautifully by you so yeah 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 I'm really pleased to hear that I love that I love that you've how you've expressed that that it gave you the confidence because that's probably the most common phrase that I hear ever whether it's working one-on-one with people or through brand alchemy and it's like it's one thing to say I can help you find this confidence, but it's another thing for people to actually sort of experience it. So thank you for expressing yeah. that. I appreciate it a lot. Okay. Um, and now, like we've been talking about what, you know, our little businesses, how do you, mm. like how, what do you say when people ask you what you do for a living and how do they react? I say I make earrings because I don't know how to encapsulate and I think they'd laugh because, you know, most people do think that earrings is just something that you wear. So I do say I make earrings and they just go, huh. Like it's still like, huh. (laughs) So, and I'm okay with that now. I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. You know, I don't, I have never cared what people think of me because the only person that matters is yourself. So, you know, I'm like, whatever, if you want to go and, you know, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've on a similar note, I do just simple, make it very simple. Um, I've in the past, I have tried in a convoluted way to help people understand what it is that I do, but um, I either now say I do branding (laughs) 
or I'm a graphic yeah. designer. Um, and they, they yeah. take the graphic designer one like, oh, yeah, cool. Like you design flyers and stuff. I'm like, yeah, 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 I do. Um, and yeah. yeah, or they thought, yeah, or branding, they're kind of like, they don't quite, some people just don't even quite understand that. So um, I think the more yeah. you can simplify it, move on. <laughs> and mm. as long as you can speak to the hearts of the people that matter, that's all that's exactly. all that matters and that you're living in alignment with your purpose and you know that you're making a difference in the world every day um I think exactly. yeah it's yeah. funny isn't it it's such a funny thing um so <laughs> just in wrapping up I would love to know like now that you've you've come through this nine years like from where you started to where you are now you have experienced some stuff like you've been through some hard yards in business and it takes like guts and staying power and patience to get to where you are now so if you um were having a coffee chat with um a young mom with littles at home really trying to make a go of her handmade product based business feeling like you know that feeling it's never going to take off what am I doing um it's not it's not what my friends are doing and it, like, you know, yeah. just having all these thoughts, what yeah. would you say to her? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> and it honestly, yeah. like, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. Like we kind of envisage that, especially when we're starting out, that there's this big end goal and when I get there, I'm going to be done. Yeah. But you actually never, ever as an entrepreneur will ever, ever, ever be done because mm once you move to a different level and then you move to a different level, you just keep learning and you just keep reaching and striving and want to have more impact or do different things. And so I would say to her, yes, always keep that big vision in your mind of what is possible, Mm -hmm. but don't let it make you feel like, Oh, I can't do it. I'm never going to be good enough. I'm not going to do that. Just ask yourself what, What's the one little thing I could do now? What could I do today that tomorrow I'll say, good work, good work for doing that and give yourself a pat on the back. Like just keep it really simple and especially when you're trying to do it at home with little people, make it simple, small, Mm. little achievable chunks that you're going to go to bed and go, yes, I did that today. Mm. Like instead of going to bed oh, and thinking about the list, I can promise you that nine years in, my to-do list is still growing, (laughs) not getting smaller. So it's just, yeah, little baby steps, literally all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Such good advice. Thank you, Liv. And thank you so much for your time today. I just have a couple of fun rapid fire questions. So I'm going to say a word and you just say the first thing that comes to your mind. This is scary. <laughs> what's your, yeah, no, no, it's not. It's not, I'm not scary. What's your, what's your favourite app? Oh, I said, Canva is what came to mind. Ooh, okay. Um, time of day? Mm, early in the morning. Exercise? Swimming. Swimming. In the ocean, right? I'm actually a com- back in the pool. I did that mm. when I was little, little, and I'm loving it. Oh, cool. Here's to, yeah. yeah, cool. I love that. Um, okay, favourite habit yeah. or ritual? Oh. Oh. Hugging my children whenever they walk past. Like, oh, it's just that's what so I do. Sweet. Just grab them and hug them. Like, oh, yeah. my gosh. That's gorgeous. Um, <laughs> favourite way to relax? A bath. And book yeah and favorite thing about your business the freedom mm. oh yeah. so good thank you so so much Liv and finally my thank very last question me. you're welcome um where can we find you where can people find your gorgeous array of delightfulness <laughs> thank you of obviously on Instagram my little corner is by live online is my tag um i'm on facebook too and our website is by live online.com go yeah. and check her out thanks live <laughs> thank you rach thank you so much for listening if you loved this week's episode of brand lover take a screenshot of wherever you're listening and share your biggest takeaway on instagram or facebook and don't forget to tag me 
I'd love to give you a shout out and thank you personally. Also feel free to subscribe and leave a review to help the Brand Lover podcast reach more heart-aligned entrepreneurs just like yourself. Thanks again and I'll see you next week.